Lately, I've become more bold. Steering the direction of her life, she imagines a small boat sailing into the uncharted waters. Perhaps the wooden shell is painted blue and the pale pigment is weather thin and cracking, but in the sturdy sort of way, like an aged carpenter's hands. The fluttering sail is blank and thick, fresh parchment in the wind. She was a lifelong cartographer, mapping meticulously the moments to come. But in the midst of a heavy storm, her bright collection of colored geography became sodden with rain and sea salt, a horrible mess of tearing paper and blurred ink. She cried quietly over her ruined maps and threw them into the wind. Now she follows only her silvery compass and the stars. The only thing that you have to do on the trail is walk. Like you just have to get from point A to point B, and there's no one there that's telling you where to go or where to be. Throughout my second year, I was really questioning who, this sounds really cheesy, but like I was just really questioning who I was and who I actually was. Um, what, when was I being authentic? When was I performing? When was I just like trying to fit into a crowd? When was I just trying to fit what I expected people wanted me to be? I grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, which is beautiful and just bridges and I don't know, there's just sort of a vastness about the city that makes it really easy to travel through and just a lot of attention to the natural beauty, uh, which I love. My mom is definitely more like wildly creative. It was never for anyone other than herself with the paintings. I think that that was, but being able to watch her engage with this creative medium. Um, at a young age and just seeing that as being more normal I think was really influential because then it just like gave me the familiarity to not think that it was super weird if I was just like I don't know alone painting um, and then my dad on the other hand he actually studied studio art in college because he owns a rug business now in Chattanooga and he's like he designs all the rugs designs all the catalogs um, and the rugs themselves are amazing and I think just being able to see that creative process too and him being able to engage with art that he loves but also in a more tactile sense or more business sense um, has been really influential. Within a six month span, it was like October, my parents separated, November, I had to quit the rowing team, December, I broke my leg really badly in a bike accident. Um, January I came back to school but I was on crutches and I was in a lot of pain and I just had surgery and so that was really hard and then February I like this is the most random thing but I got the mumps and I think that like coming into spring of first year I just felt so broken and like all the plans that I had had for college were wrecked as I came in really ambitious high school student thinking that like Oh man, like I've, I'm going to be a student athlete, I'm going to be a perfect student, I'm going to make all these friends, I'm going to be like really cool on Instagram, <laughs> my life is going to look perfect, um, I have this family that's home and that I love, and I don't know, I think that having a lot of those um, pieces of my identity just sort of crumble before me um, and feeling like it was just unraveling. It was a huge wake-up call that, wow, I definitely don't have as much control as I thought I did, but there's also so many blessings within the wreckage, especially after that first year. It really let me let go of the plans that I had. I just couldn't shake this feeling that I wasn't going to be back at UVA that next fall. I think when I actually took it on uh, SIS, it was pretty wild because you just literally log in and click a button and then you're <laughs> like, have a gap here. Sort of recklessly just click the button and it's like, okay, not, I'm, I'm gonna take a gap here. Let's see what happens. I was seeking a, like a physical space in which I wasn't in my hometown. Like I wasn't in that community of high school and rowing and family and I wasn't trying to fit that image but I wasn't in the university community either where I was just like felt just sort of 
lonely but also groundless. Yeah, I think that I really liked the AT because it offered, it was, it was one trail. Like it was just 2,200 miles of wilderness that you start on and you just move one direction and you have no idea what's gonna happen. So convincing my dad to let me do this adventure was, I don't know, it took a while. I probably wasn't until about a week before I left that I finally got the A-OK -okay from him. Um, and so we ended up road tripping, the two of us, up to Maine from Tennessee. And so it probably took about 20 hours to get there. So I remember he dropped me off in this parking lot and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I had this like huge pack and he dropped me off in this parking lot and I remember like saying bye to him and it was just, this, it was like just the strangest moment. And I remember him saying that, I can't tell if this is the most loving thing or the stupidest thing I've ever done as a dad. The first part of the trail is called the 100 mile wilderness. And so you come in and you've got 100 miles without a town, which is just like, Pretty wild. I think starting off and being so intensely by yourself, it's like catching up with a friend that you haven't seen in a really long time. Um, and so it's really awkward at first, but then you sort of warm up and then, and then all of a sudden you're like, it feels okay, that sort of tense feelings in your shoulder or like that feeling of just sort of not being quite comfortable or just feeling really awkward or self-judgmental, it just slowly fades. And then you just sort of get into your groove and I, I don't know, there's just sort of this feeling of contentment. The quiet doesn't seem quite so loud. So I called it the ounce to happiness ratio is what determines what you carry and what you don't carry. And so what that means is like, if something weighs a lot, and it doesn't give you that much happiness, then it's probably like the ratio doesn't add up and then it's probably not worth carrying. So the strangest thing that I carried was I carried like the little box with watercolors and watercolor paper. And they were just like little postcard size images. The nice thing about watercolors was it was, I mean, you find water everywhere you go. And so I just used water from where I was. Um, and so I think it really offered a space where I could sit and rest. Um, but then also really engaged with the beauty around me. It's just a tool of noticing, I guess. I mean, it's probably like 60% of the time I was like spending the night by myself in the woods and that was a little scary, but the, all the other time you just met people. And it was like kindergarten, you know, where the person that you come up to and happen to be sitting next to is your best friend for the day. I would meet people that are just all ages, all walks of life, all backgrounds, like from different countries, from different parts of the country, like, and I would have these conversations with them where it didn't necessarily matter that I was just this 20 year old white girl. I was like, just had these conversations about their lives and about what they believe and about their families and about their, what they want in life. And I don't know, it was just really cool to hear all those stories. And so I got to that first town finally after like having the 100 mile wilderness. And I met this guy who was going northbound um, at a hostel and we hit it off pretty well. And he was like, okay, I'm from New Hampshire. Like when you get to New Hampshire, call me and my family will host you, it'll be great. And so then I get to New Hampshire and I called him and I was like, hey, I'm here. And uh, he's like, oh, cool. Well, we're actually about to go to a wedding right now, but I'd love for you to come. Um, and so then I ended up going to a wedding. I was probably like one of the most experiences where I was like, saw the spontaneity and really saw the value in the spontaneity. I never, when I started, I didn't intend to finish. I was, so it was in October, um, I got to Harper's Ferry and I think the last few days on the trail were really hard. And it got really cold, like I would do like, you know, it's just like these marathon walking days. And I think that from breaking my leg I, I like had a bunch of metal in my ankle and I think that it was just a little bit too much for it um, and so I overdid it and I ended up getting Achilles tendonitis. I called one of my friends whose uh, parents lived close by and 
they like came to pick me up and so then I could have like maybe a week off um, and to sort of like let it heal. And so I think that like the combination of the injury and just the cold and the loneliness, I think that that was a really good wake up call. That I decided to move back to Charlottesville in January um, and I had no idea what I was doing because I still wasn't in school at that point. And so I ended up working at Starbucks for a while and then nannying for a family. So I was definitely busy during that time of not being in school, but being able to be in like a more rooted environment. But I started painting a ton. I went into this thing that I just loved and that I found a another piece of my identity in that I don't think I would have otherwise if I hadn't had the gap year. Right when I got back to Charlottesville, I pretty quickly just went back to pre-trail Lachlan. It just was almost like the trail was just a strange dream or this weird memory that I guess I had gotten a lot more confidence and I was definitely like pretty different. <laughs> they like, I, I realized pretty quickly that it wasn't like the stories that I had or the experiences that I had were really hard to communicate or really hard to share. Part of it was just like you had to be there um, where it's just this neat memory, this neat sort of antidote to the story when you're meeting someone you're like, oh yeah, I did that. And it's, it's pretty, usually pretty shallow where it's like, oh, you did that by yourself? And yeah, I did it. I did it by myself and I met a lot of people along the way. And they're like, oh man, was that hard? And I was like, oh yeah, it was pretty fun. It was hard sometimes. And then that's it. Because <laughs> you get back into the university landscape and your mindset just shifts back into deadlines and friend groups and just daily whatever. So I think that one of the ways that I've been able to sort of reflect on the trail experience best is by combining it with my painting um, and how that painting has sort of grown into, I don't know, really a skill for self-reflection and communication. But it'll just be like just fragments of these memories of these just places that I loved and just passed through for a moment. The future is sort of a blank canvas at the moment. I don't even really know what the next few months are gonna look like. The trail taught me that the best things in life you can't even imagine. Um, and so one of the things I actually thought about was just the meaning behind a name and my name because it is it is unusual. Um, so the meaning literally is land of the locks. Especially when I was going through Maine and throughout a lot of places on the trail, I would just, oh gosh, especially in Maine, because they, the lakes were enormous, just immense expanses. Having that connection to my name of being like land of the lakes, um, I, I just, it just makes my heart warm. And then my last name, Davis, I like, I love Latin and a little bit of a nerd there. So da is like the imperative form of give, like to give, to provide, to, um, give forth DA and then Wies, uh, V-I-S um, means to the road or Wia is a uh, way or road or path or trail 